This is Kevin Cogabella, sports editor of The Loyal I'm here with managing editor Dan Rafferty, and we're here for another edition of The Playbook. Uh, first off, we're going to talk some Super Bowl. Yep. Uh, Dan had a column earlier this week about Super Bowl prop bets. Mm -hmm. Dan, what was one bet that you came across that you think is that can make things a little interesting for the viewers at home? Definitely interesting, and this one's going to come at the end of the game. So the bet was, what color Gatorade? will the winning coach be dumped on at the end of the game. And the best odds, green is at 10 to 1. So if you put $10 down and they pour green Gatorade on either Pete Carroll or John Fox, you could be coming out of there with a Benjamin. Uh, let's go on to predictions. Mm -hmm. Dan, what is your prediction for the Super Bowl? Defense has won three out of four times, uh, the three and one. This time, though, I go against the trend. I go against Peyton Manning. Of course you do. The weather forecast looks great. Um, and I think that... The Denver Broncos have too many weapons on defense. We've heard a lot about the Seattle defense, but the Denver defense, I think, can control Percy Harvin, who's only played two games this yeah. year, 33 snaps, I think it is. Russell Wilson, who um, I think is a great quarterback. I don't think he's a super winning bowl quarterback yet. I think he needs one more year. Disclaimer, I'm a Seattle guy, big Seattle fan. Um, I think the magic number for the Seahawks is 28. Mm -hmm. I think they get the run game going. I think the score is 28 to 16. Wow. Um, and I see the Seahawks pull it out based on their run game, based on their defense, and based on the fact that uh, the weather is going to be pretty crappy. For well, there we go. I agree that Seahawks get 28, though. I think it's 34-31. Okay, so 34-31 Broncos, and I'm yes. saying 28-16 Seahawks. Right. Uh, let's move forward. Let's talk a little bit about LMU basketball. Right. Uh, Dan, what's the state of the team right now? Fit. I mean, literally literally and figuratively, these this team, they're only playing with seven scholarship players, and they're small. Anthony Ireland, the best player, he's at 5'10". Their biggest man is Osborne. He's at 6'9", or something like that, 11. They're just getting dominated in the paint. Mm -hmm. Happened against Gonzaga, happened against St. Mary's. Mm -hmm. They were able to beat a last-place Pacific, Pacific team yeah. after 60 second-half points. And I'd say, I'd say maybe, you know, they get by with their quickness and their outside shooting, but... The team is struggling from beyond the arc. They're one of the worst. Uh, they rank near the bottom of the WCC in three-point shooting. Ireland's three-point shooting last time I checked was down to 28%. Yep. No doubt in my mind this team still has the ability to compete, mm -hmm. but can they compete for 40 minutes? That's the question with only seven scholarship players left on that roster. One thing to say, though, is they played a lot of away games this yeah. year, and I think that if this team is going to make a run, it's going to happen in the latter end of the WCC schedule. They have some teams at home, some beatable, winnable games at home. And then, as we saw last year, you make it into the WCC tournament, and anything can happen. Anything so, can happen. talk to Coach Good today. He's literally just trying to get as high up in the standings as possible and head into Vegas on a high note. There you go. Well, that's this week's edition of The Playbook for coverage on the Super Bowl and of LMU men's basketball. Check us out in print on Thursday and online at laloyalan.com slash sports, Twitter at Loyalan Sports. Thanks.